What's up guys, Mizzo Frizzo from Pitchfork Academy here and in this Unreal Engine 5 tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a basic main menu. So as you can see here my main menu has this level in the background and you can have it in any kind of level with whatever you like in the background. And we're going to add the functionality to either quit or start your game and we've also got this options button here in case you want to add an options menu later on. So if I just hit start game here, you'll see it'll take us to another level with whatever game mode you've got set up in that level. But just before we get started guys, if you like what we do here at Pitchfork Academy and you'd like to connect with more like-minded people, access to our Discord server Mizzo's Dizzo is available for just $1.50 per month via Patreon. The Discord server is becoming a pretty cool place to be. There's heaps of cool, and very funny, and very helpful and smart people, as well as an integrated AI chatbot to help you with your Unreal Engine 5 related questions. Your $1.50 per month goes towards that AI chatbot. It's actually a paid model, so it's very clever indeed, as well as helping to support us and what we do here at Pitchfork Academy. But without further ado, let me show you how to do this. Alrighty guys, now FYI I'm using Unreal Engine 5.6 for this tutorial, but you can use any version of Unreal Engine 5 that you'd like. And I'm here in my base project and it might look a little bit different, but essentially this is just the third person template from 5.6. I have just slightly changed the styling of the default level. And as you may have noticed, I've got a couple of extra folders here. I've imported some animations from Project Mega Sample and also Military Weapons Packs. And that's just so that I can basically create a character that I'm going to have in the background of my main menu, holding a weapon and looking cool. And basically what we'll do is we'll set up our main menu to load this level so that we will come in and we will be playing the third person map with the third person character. But your main menu will need to be contained in a separate level. And what I'm going to do is store all of my main menu stuff in this folder. So you can right click and create a new folder, call it UI. And then within UI, I've created another folder called main menu. And you'll see in here, I've already gone ahead and made a menu level but basically what you can do is you can go to file and new level and if you just wanted sort of an empty black background or you just wanted to use an image for the background of your main menu you could go ahead and just create an empty level you just want to create that and then hit save and then navigate to where you want to save it and you could just call it a uh, menu level or something like that and then use this level if you want. But if you're like me and you wanna have a sort of three dimensional background to your menu, like what we did on Skyblocker, we had quite a nice background using UDS, Ultra Dynamic Sky. We had the blocks falling and stuff and changing weather and we thought that was pretty nice. Now I'm gonna do something similar here. So I'm gonna open up this menu level and basically all this is is a duplicate of the third person level that you saw previously, except I've got this character here and he might look a little bit spaz, uh, but if I hit simulate here, it's just because he's got left hand IK set up in the animation blueprint. So I'm gonna have this cool guy holding his weapon and looking cool in the background of my menu. So the first thing I'm gonna do in here is make sure I don't have a player start. Uh, you can use a player start to sort of spawn your pawn class in your menu but i kind of prefer to just position my pawn where i want in the level and then turn on auto possess so you can position this uh, where you want your pawn to sort of spawn and be possessed but i'm actually going to delete this and then the next thing we want to do is check the world settings tab for what game mode this level is using if you created an empty level, it probably doesn't have a game mode. Uh, this one has the third person game mode with the third person character and the default player controller and game state, player state, so on and so forth. But we are going to create our own pawn class for our menu level. 
So I'm actually going to right click in here and create a new game mode by going to blueprint class and selecting game mode base. And we'll call this GM for game mode underscore main menu. And you can drag this in here. And by the way, guys, if you don't have a world settings tab, you can just go to window and world settings. And then I like to dock my world settings tab right here next to the details panel. And then the next thing we're going to want to do after setting our GM main menu as the override game mode in this level is create our own pawn class and player controller class. So we can right click down here, create a new blueprint class of type pawn. And I'm just going to call this BP underscore uh, menu pawn. We'll also need a player controller class from which to spawn our user interface so let's also right click create a new blueprint class of type player controller and we'll call this pc underscore main menu we can go ahead and drag both of these into the relevant slots over here in the override and that will set them as the defaults for this game mode which will be used whenever this level is loaded Let's also go ahead and create our actual menu widget while we're here creating blueprints. We can right click and go to user interface widget blueprint user widget and we'll call this W underscore main menu. Let's go ahead and hit save all since we've created quite a few new assets. And before we forget, let's also set this level as the default level that launches when we first launch the game. So if you go to edit and project settings and over here, look for maps and modes, you'll see the editor startup map and the game default map. Now the editor startup map is just the map that loads when you first open the project in the editor here. But when you start the packaged game, the first map that loads is the game default map. And you want to set this as the level that contains your main menu. And that for me is level underscore main menu. And I'm going to browse to that and make sure that that is this menu level right here that I've got open at the moment. So now whenever we launch this game, it will launch in this level by default. And when we launch this level, we want to auto possess our menu pawn, which we can place in the world here. But first we just need to add a camera to it so that we can actually view the level and the menu. So if we open BP menu pawn here and we just add and search for camera, we can add a camera and that's literally all we need to add to the menu pawn. We can compile and save that and close that. And then we can drag that into the level and we can start sort of positioning it where we want it to be and how we want to view the level. And then with it selected, we can go to the details panel, auto possess player, change that to player zero. And now if we hit play on this level, we will automatically possess that pawn in the position that it's in. And it's got no kind of movement inputs or anything. So it will be right here when we launch this level. Nice. Let's go ahead and add the menu to the left side of the screen here. Now, I'm of the opinion that spawning your UI from the player controller is the best practice because, you know, it sort of exists locally and not spawning it from the game mode or the level blueprint or anything like that. We're going to spawn it from the player controller. And the other thing we can do inside of the player controller here, if we head on over to the event graph, is we can also set this uh, to sort of set our mouse settings and our input settings on begin play. So what we can do is actually find set show mouse cursor and set that to true. Let's also go ahead and create our widget. And this is going to be our W underscore main menu. Let's go ahead and promote this to a variable while we're here and we'll call this main menu UI and add this to the viewport. And then what we can also do is set input mode 
to UI only, set input mode UI only. The player controller here will be a reference to the self because we're in the player controller class. And the in widget to focus, we can plug in our main menu UI like so. The next step would be to add some buttons with some functionality to our main menu. So we can actually browse to our main menu and open it up. And then in the designer here, the very first thing I'm going to do is find a canvas panel and just drag it out. And inside of the canvas panel, let's grab a vertical box, drag it out over here. I'm going to anchor mine to the left side of the screen and we'll make this a bit bigger and just place it more or less in the right spot. And I'm not going to go too heavily into styling here. That's all up to you. You can fiddle with the position of this and, you know, the details of your buttons and whatnot. Um, but I'm just basically going to add three buttons to this. So let's add a button to the vertical box and then we'll add some text to the button and we'll duplicate this button in a moment. But first, let's just change some settings of it so that all of our buttons are the same. The first thing I'll do is drop down padding and I'll add 50 padding above and 50 padding below this button so that they're all equally spaced. And I'm also going to rename these buttons as I go. So I'll call this uh, first button button underscore start and I'll change the text to say start game. And I'll make sure the alignment of the text is centered both horizontally and vertically. And I'll change the general padding to zero because I just want it to be nice and even. And actually I might add 10 padding above and 10 padding below like so. So it's nice and centered inside the button. You could also go ahead and change the sort of color settings on the button here under appearance. You've got style. You can change how much padding when it's pressed and the colors and all sorts of stuff in here in the styling, but I'm just going to leave it like so. I'm now going to select the button and the text. I'm going to control C them and then I'm going to click in the vertical box and then paste this button two more times like so. And we could make this vertical box a little bit smaller and position it wherever we like. And then let's go ahead and rename these buttons and change the text. So this second button, I'm going to make button underscore options and the text I'm going to change to options. And this third button, let's make this button underscore quit and change the content of the text to quit. And now that we have some buttons here on our canvas panel, we can compile and save this. And if we hit play on our menu level, we'll see that our menu comes up on the left like so. And we have our mouse cursor and we can click these buttons. Nice. It might look a bit strange if you don't full screen it and then press play. Uh, that will be sort of closer to the actual scale of your menu. Nice. Okay. Let's go ahead and add some functionality to these buttons so they actually do something. So what we can do is head back on into our widget and then I'm going to select the button start here and scroll down and find this little plus button that adds the event on clicked. So this is event on clicked of the start button. And what we can do now is open level. And you can either just hard code this in with a name or you can open level by object reference. And this one I'd recommend in case you are kind of loading a saved game, for example, and you've saved which level you're up to and you want to load that level. So let's do open level by object reference. And here we can drop this down and we can find our uh, level underscore third person, the default third person template level. I'll select this one and then you can also promote this to a variable and you can call it uh, level to open or something like that. And then if you wanted to, you know, load a specific level uh, on construct of the widget, 
you could set this as something from your game instance that you've loaded from a save game, for example. Uh, so this, you know, will sort of be more scalable in the future. We can also uh, select our button underscore quit and add on clicked. And when we click the quit button, we just want to quit game like so. Now I'm not going to go into creating an options menu in this tutorial. I'm, I have done a basic one before, but I might do that in the future. And if I have done that, I'll add a card to the top right of your screen right now, as well as link that video in the description and in the pinned comment. But for now, we're just going to hit start game and quit. And the only other thing we need to do is make sure that when we load this third person level, uh, we basically change the input mode and the show mouse cursor uh, back to what they should be in that game mode. So what we can do is we can go back to our third person level and I'll save everything here. And then in the world settings, uh, the player controller class here is just the default class. You won't even be able to browse to it because it's just a C++ class. Uh, but if we create our own player controller class, uh, we can then change the controller settings when we load into this level. So I'm gonna right click, create a new blueprint class of type player controller. And I'm just gonna call this BPPC for player controller. I'll drag this onto the player controller class of the third person game mode here. And then we can open this up, go to the event graph and on begin play, we want to set show mouse cursor to false. And we also want to uh, set input mode to game only and the player controller, we can get a reference to self. And that will all be working now. If we head back to our menu level and we hit play, I'm gonna full screen this and hit play. We've got our menu here and options obviously isn't connected to anything, but quit, we'll quit the game. It ended the pie like so and start game. We'll load this other level and we've got no mouse cursor. We've gone straight into game mode with that input mode and that is all working as expected. And that's it guys. If this tutorial has been of any use or value to you whatsoever, please hit like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.